Today we are talking about my Vanagon. So that is a van and a wagon, Vanagon. And this beautiful creature behind me is a 1989 Vanagon Karat. It is a hard top, meaning it does not have the pop-up tent, but I do put a tent on the roof very often. And today I'm gonna to show you what this van was before and what I've turned it into. So let's check it out. So today I'm here in a local county park near my house and I brought my van up here just to show you in this pretty awesome California background here what this van's all about. And let's get started just from the front so you can get a good understanding of how beautiful this van is. What we've got going on here is just a white two-wheel drive van again Karat. The bumper and the grill were all spray painted by me because they were pretty gnarly and sun faded when I got this van. And you can see it is just an eye catcher. It really looks great. Uh, I get compliments on it everywhere I go. On the side here, you got your sliding door that opens up like all the vans have. And the back hatch back here lets me into this giant back section, which we'll talk about in just a minute or so. So, but this is it. This is what the van looks like. There she is in all of her glory. Okay, so I mentioned that I was gonna share what this van was when I got it. Whoever owned this van before me, or maybe generations of owners before me, had actually invested quite a bit into making sure the engine ran, which I am not a mechanical person, so having a really great working engine was a very important part of what I was looking for in a van. Because I'm not going to be able to do all the upkeep on my own, and I don't want to spend thousands of dollars a year with the van in a shop. So the engine was in great shape. The exterior body was in pretty good condition. It still is. It has some issues on the roof because there's been a lot of different alterations to the roof over the many years. And if you ever get into this van life stuff, you might see some crazy Franken vans out there. And maybe you're watching this because you're into vans and you have a Franken van. So tell me about it in the comments. So the guy that had it before had put a lot of money into the engine, but not a lot of money into the remodel of the van itself. And it looks like he had started this remodel on a budget, but never really got very far into it before having to sell it. What he had done though, was he had put this nice laminate floor in. The walls at the time were this cardboard backing. It was like the stuff that comes on the back of Ikea furniture. You know what I'm talking about? Like that cardboard kind of hybrid wood. That's what my walls on this whole van were made out of. They were rough cut, not very well done. They were painted sea foam green, which was its own vibe. The ceiling that the guy had put in here was a quarter inch sheet of plywood stained in a dark brown. And then to get it to attach to the, to the van's metal ceiling, they had used some two by fours above it just as anchor points and screwed it into the two by fours. But over time, that ceiling had warped and had become very wavy. Between the walls and the ceiling and the floor, I kept the floor, but I ripped out the walls and I ripped out the ceiling to kind of just start over. Now, one really good thing that some prior owner had done was someone had installed a solar panel, you can see it up here, on the roof and hooked it up to a marine battery. But when I got the van, none of that had been really cased or wired up correctly. So when I got this van, I had to dive into the electronics. I had to dive into a complete remodel and it was an awesome time. And now I'm here with the final product or at least this version of the final product and I couldn't be happier. I can use this van to go surfing, which I often do, just throw my boards on the roof and go to Santa Cruz. I use it to go camping with my family and take the kids camping. Um, and I also got it to be a photography prop for whether I'm shooting portraits or something commercial or a landscape. Having this van in the photos is just a great accessory to add on to my photography. 
But because I'm using it for photos, I also wanted it to be something you could photograph and it would look nice. And so a lot of the, the need for the photography part drove the vision for the design. Okay, that enough of me talking. Let me just show you a few things. All right, we're crawling in the van. Okay, let's start right here. All right, I'm in the passenger seat here and the front here is basically all original. I didn't really do anything to the dash, nor did I do anything to the seats. This is all basically original seats. Uh, that steering wheel, there's no way it's original because it has the Wolfsburg edition uh, emblem on it, but this is not a Wolfsburg edition van as far as I know. If you know better than me, please tell me because I'm curious about that. But I don't think that wheel is original to the van. But the dash had some stuff done at some point because you can see people put holes in this thing at some point. I don't know what it was, but this is all basically original. There was a cloth cover up here on the roof, like an original, basically car cover, some visors, all that came out when I did the ceiling. So I'll talk about that more in a minute. I also am not certain that the seat swivel is original. It looks aftermarket, but basically there is a swivel on this seat that lets me spin it 360 to be able to hang out in the back seat if I wanted to. So may or may not be original, not sure. This is not a manual, it is an automatic. Anyone can drive this thing without stressing out. Uh, even though, man, I love driving manual and I wish it was manual, but my wife and friends, I think like it being automatic. Somebody I put in an aftermarket stereo, which is helpful with a USB charger. Obviously the phone mount is not original and this, uh, this leather uh, holder here, someone had put that in at some point too. But for the most part, you know, now that I'm saying it all, I guess it's not all original. <laughs> but for the most part, this is the most original part of the van, this, this front section here. All right, so let's hop back out and let's hop into the back seat. <sighs> okay, let's talk about this back seat for a minute because this is a very different animal. This van, being a Vanagon Karat, originally had a much wider seat than the camper vans did. And the original seats, I can't find them. I found a junkyard in Sacramento and I went there, a Vanagon junkyard, and the guy had a great idea and he said this was pretty common for these vans. He had these Eurovan seats, but the Eurovan seats won't fit in this body. They're, they're not quite wide enough. And so what we ended up doing was uh, finding a piece that someone had custom made at some point and I had a welder recreate this piece. And, and let me show you what it is. You can see this piece right here. This goes into the frame and the Eurovan seats then bolt into this. I have four of these, one on every corner of the seats. And again, what that let me do was put these narrow seats in this larger van and they're completely safe and secure. I got the seat belts from Go Westy and bolted them in, so seat belts are good. This van is street legal and safe. And obviously the seats didn't look like this. Underneath these Baja blankets are original Eurovan seats. We just took two Baja blankets we found on Etsy that matched the colors we were looking for for the van, and we wrapped it and we used butcher twine to, to basically sew it together underneath and in the back so you would never notice it or see it. We cut around where the bolts go and we basically did our own upholstery for 60 bucks. And we made these seats and they have held up now for two years, no unraveling, nothing's falling apart. So I've been very happy with just how the seats have turned out and they have their own look and feel. I feel like they fit the van well. Once I ripped out the cardboard walls and got the plywood ceiling off, the whole van was just this metal frame and I insulated every inch of this van to make it as camping ready as possible. Although I will say it still gets pretty cold on these California nights, especially in the spring and fall and winter. But to get the shiplap in, what I ended up doing was I took the van before any work was done on the interior. I took the van to a welder and I had a welder put crossbars at the highest section of the roof, just weld in these, these metal crossbars because it would let me put the shiplap in, which shiplap, I, I got a lot of questions on this initially. Being that it's wood, people were concerned that it made the van very heavy, but shiplap is incredibly light and thin. 
so what I did was I had these crossbars put in, I had the shiplap run underneath the crossbars and I used self-tapping screws to put them in. The crossbars allowed everything to be completely level. So my ceiling is completely level if you can't tell, which by the way, I'm just noticing, uh, say hi to my GoPro. I probably should have taken that off now that I'm thinking about it. And it just beep, it's beeping at me. What just happened? Battery low? Yeah, we're good. Let's turn you off. Uh, okay, so we're gonna leave Mr. GoPro right there. The ceiling is completely flat or completely level front to back. It's a nice, perfectly level ceiling, which I think matters in a space. You want it to feel good and look good. And what was here before with that wavy plywood just wasn't working. This is a much more elegant solution. I also cut, as you can see here, I cut these uh, recessed light holes in the shiplap in ran lighting so that if we need light at night when we're camping, we have it. Don't need that right now though, because it is beautiful out here. A little cold, but beautiful. Shiplap on the ceiling was not overly complicated, but the shiplap coming down the body was, uh, this stuff doesn't want to bend. We were having to be real creative with the angles and how we cut it to get it to frame out really nice all the way down. And you can see, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I mean, you're putting wood, which is very flat, uh, on rounded metal parts. And so it wasn't the most elegant build out, but unless you're looking at fine details, you don't really notice how this piece here, these, these aren't like perfect, but they work. And again, most people are none the wiser. Cut in over here. I put my uh, switches here. These control my lights in the van. The solar panel control is here as well. And then I found these uh, nifty little cup holders on Go Westy put them here in the back so that when people are in the back seat, they have some cup holders. Pretty nice. One more thing that I did on the shiplap was I got this on Amazon, this five outlet power strip with three USB. And then what that does is it runs underneath my van uh, seat, which has a uh, Renology 1000 watt inverter. And then the marine battery is right here. And that's where all the electronics get powered off of on this fan. Now this fan isn't going to power your hair dryer or anything that is very demanding, but it definitely powers all my electronics. It charges everything up. It powers my coffee grinder uh, and just about anything else that I've needed to power off the van reasonably. It powers with no problem. Okay, moving on to the cabinet. This is just like a Home Depot kitchen cabinet. I think it was an upper kitchen cabinet. It's not complicated. It wasn't very expensive. I just wanted a little storage. And so I wanted the ability to put some things in here, out of sight, out of mind. And it's worked incredibly well. It was also a little tricky to mount though, because it has a square back and it's going on this rounded edge. So what we did was, we put it as flush as we could get it. We screwed it into the body and into the floor. And then I just got a little laminate and then I traced the outline I needed, cut it, and then I screwed the laminate onto the cabinet and then just painted it and caulked it and we're good to go. And it looks great. I mean, you would, again, you would never really notice the imperfection over there because it works and it's working great. So now you've seen the front of the van, you, you've seen the living room of the van, so let's talk about the back and the bed because I'm very happy with how the bed and the back turned out. Okay, one thing about vans, if you aren't aware, is that the, the engine is actually in the back. So it's underneath all of this. So to get to the engine, I have to move, move all of this, which is not always the most fun thing to do. But as a non-mechanical guy, I don't want to go to the engine unless I have to. And so if it needs some real work, I would take it to a shop and I would remove all this before that. You may notice here, my favorite animal is represented here in the back. I've got this Pendleton bison wool blanket. I actually use it when I camp. Uh, and then I've got this bison skull. I told you in my last video or two videos ago, the GoPro is still beeping. Maybe it was two videos ago. This is an actual skull of a bison. Got it from a guy that actually killed this bison and harvested it. Uh, but the skull is just cool. So I put it in my van. I think it freaks people out too. If they walk near my van when I'm parked at like Target or something, they see the skull in the back, they don't know what kind of guy I am, and they move on. And then adjacent, just as some decor in the back, got a fake hanging plant, because I tend to kill real plants. And I've got this antique water bottle, just because I think it's beautiful, it looks really good, and goes with the vibe of my van. All right, I'm gonna lay the bed down and show you how this works. All right, so to lay the bed down, again, this is a Euro van seat. So it has a little handle in the back. I grip the handle, lift it up, 
the bed is gonna come off of the bolts that I have installed into the frame that keeps it upright. That handle, when you pull it, it unlatches the hooks. And then we're gonna pull it out and lay it down. So check this out. And again, I don't wanna overcomplicate how simplistic this stuff is. The original bolts that would have gone into the frame to secure the seat, they're long gone. But I got these at Ace Hardware for like 40 cents. I had a welder weld a nut to the frame where the hole for the original bolt is. And then I just screw these in and they, the seat clamps right onto them, just like it was an original. Again, 40 cents, not overly complicated. Now that the seat is coming down, I'm gonna push my foam back a little bit to make room for it and finish dropping it. Okay, for the back bed section, I found this website that just sells foam blocks. You can order the custom size, get whatever size you need, and get a foam block. I think I put maybe 100, 120 bucks into these two blocks of foam. The bottom one is very dense and, and pretty hard to be consistent with the seats. And the top one, it, it's kind of like a medium hard. So it's like, it's a good mattress. It's not too soft where you sink in, but it's also not really incredibly hard because I want to be able to fold it in half. And the bottom foam, I had cut to be the same height as the seats. So basically now between the seats and that back foam, I have a completely level surface that allows me to flip out the top foam and make a bed. Check it. And now that the foam is down, I just take my blankets, which I, I keep in this basket that I, I keep in the van, sheets and all that, and I would just wrap this up like it's a mattress and have a bed, easy peasy. So for now though, I'm just gonna throw this blanket over and we're gonna use our imagination to pretend like it's my bed. And at this point, I think you get what I'm going for here. I'm able to make this up. Like I said, all the sheets and blankets down here. I'm able to make this bed up and then have a full adult male size bed that can sleep me and my family. And yes, I mean, my whole family can easily fit in this, kids and all. Now I will say my kids are pretty tiny, but we all fit right in here and we can chill uh, if we're at part of the beach or if we're doing something out in nature for the day or we can camp in it. Or if we need more space and I wanna take four to six people, maybe adults camping, put the rooftop tent on, two up top, two below, or anything like that, and it works really well. Okay guys, uh, I hope you found my van video to be fun and enjoyable and informative. And if you have any questions or thoughts about van life, and I, I use van life very loosely. I have this thing for fun, I don't live in it. So I probably should stop saying van life. If you have any thoughts or questions about having a van again, drop them in the comments and I will always respond. I love community and I love the community that we're building here on YouTube. Hit my links below, say hi, drop a comment, like, subscribe, and all the other YouTube stuff, and I'll see you next time.